So Jack, tell me about your show that's currently on at the Saskatchewan Craft Council. Called AD2. And uh, last year I had a show at the Slate Gallery called 81 and it was to celebrate my 81st birthday and I had 81 pieces in it and I decided this year, well I haven't had an exhibition in Saskatoon for a long time, I'd have, I'll approach the Craft Council and ask them if I could have an exhibition there and I'll call it 82 and it will have 82 pieces. Are there some specific pieces in the show that really excite you? Jack? I have, there's one plate about this big in the bottom of it. I decorated the inside as well as the outside. When you turn it over, the backside is nicer than the inside. And it's uh, just a leather hard plate that I had scratched into, so it's all a kind of a drawing. I decide, well, I'll just work as I usually do and, you know, not dealing with any kind of theme, but just making stuff and choosing the very best. I don't have to push myself as an artist. I have to make art in order to keep from, I don't know, going to the casino or the bar or whatever, you know, older people do before they die, right? So it keeps me alive. So what are you doing on the inside right now? I'm expanding it. Just watch. My name is Julia Kruger and uh, I'm an independent researcher, sometimes curator, who's currently working on her PhD out of the University of Western Ontario. Um, and I've known Jack ever since I was a wee little one. And I first started to work with him um, on my master's thesis. I interviewed him and he was a great help to me with that. I did a master's thesis on Saskatchewan ceramics. And then after that, I was one of the curators on his retrospective exhibition. Well, and you told me a great story that you actually didn't know about art until you went to Winnipeg, right? It was in grade four. My dad got sick, and so uh, I had to go live with my grandmother. And uh, I went to school there for, I guess, a month or something like that. And. Uh, I was sitting beside this kid and the teacher said, okay, kids, we're going to do art now. And I poked him, I said, what's art? <laughs> I had no clue. Coming from a small town, right, we didn't do art in the country. So we're going into the vault and uh, along the way we'll take a look at a few works by uh, Jack Sears. We have a substantial collection of his work covering his entire career. We see here a couple of works from uh, that are representative of his work as a muralist. Yeah, the Mackenzie has the, the largest collection of his work that I'm aware of. Uh, we have over 50 works uh, spanning his entire career. It's, uh, I think it's really important that, uh, to have a, uh, a substantial collection of an artist of Jack's stature. I mean, he really is somebody with an international reputation. And uh, we're really proud to have uh, uh, you know, that kind of comprehensive view of, of, his, uh, of his work. It speaks volumes about his position as an artist. Uh, I think that it's quite interesting that you've got a number of different bodies of work. Um, and you've, throughout your career, been um, what I would describe as a dedicated functionalist. You make really great pots that work and can be used and enjoyed on the table. It all started because uh, I started my career in ceramics after I'd come back from Europe where I'd worked in a couple of ceramic factories. Um, I set up a studio in Winnipeg and I had to make functional work because people weren't going to buy art, quote, unquote. As we move uh, towards the, uh, the far end of uh, the Mackenzie vault, uh, we'll have a chance to look at some, uh, some of his pottery and some of his sculptural works. Uh, one of the things I really find interesting about Jack is how he uh, moves almost uh, effortlessly between those two ways of, of looking at art. I'm really drawn to Jack's work because I find that um, his dedication to functionalism is really quite 
um, admirable and interesting to me because a lot of times uh, it's hard for ceramists to balance the two um, branches. Oftentimes they'll maybe focus on one area and not so much on the other. Whereas over the course of Jack's career, he's um, accomplished major works both sculpturally and functionally. Well, it's art or it's not art, right? Um, craft is what you use to make art, right? And it doesn't matter what the medium is, because there are people who say that, well, ceramics is a craft medium, right? But it's not, right? Ceramics, ceramics is a generic term for all things done with clay. And for example, the outside of the sturdy stone building is not a work of craft, I don't think. I think it's a work of art. You've done some really innovative work with the extruder, um, which I believe started with your sturdy stone mural in Saskatoon. It did. I had that extruder built for the, the, for the mural in the sturdy stone building. The extruder is much like a cake decorator. Yeah. You fill it up with your mud and you squeeze it and it comes out depending on the shape of the, of the piece where it's going through will determine the shape of what comes out. Like on a cake decorating, you know, you get that kind of swirl. And it comes out the bottom. On the left here, we have a much earlier work from, from 1966, uh, just the year after he arrived in Regina to uh, take up a position setting up the ceramic department at the University of Regina. And this, in this work, we have a, a glimpse of his interest in Asian art, in the kinds of uh, calligraphy that you might associate with, with Chinese scroll painting and how he's applied that to uh, ceramic tiles. You've had a very long career um, and you've had a number of awards um, presented to you. Could you just tell me about a few of those and the ones that you're most proud of having received? What else? Uh, I've had an uh, alumni award for excellence in teaching at the university here and the alumni award for excellence in research. I have the Order of Canada and the Saskatchewan Order of Merit, and uh, I guess I think the, the excellence in teaching, the excellence in research, because it's, you know, university-wide, of all the people, only one person at convocation gets it. Well, yeah, you've had a really long teaching career and have influenced a number of people yeah. across the province and across Canada, so it makes sense that you would receive that for sure. Jack has had a, a very important influence on ceramics here in the province. Uh, he was hired by the University of Regina in 1965 and uh, his job was to set up the ceramics department at the university and uh, he held that position until 1998 and over the course of uh, over 30 years uh, trained and influenced uh, generations of uh, ceramic potters and artists here in the province. I don't, I don't believe in pretty, quote unquote, right? Uh, I might have said, uh, you learn the basics, develop the skills, and then you can do something with them, right? You can't make it if you don't know how to do it. So I tried to teach them how to do it and have them develop there whatever they had to develop. So when you taught ceramics, Jack, yeah. um, how did you approach teaching throwing on the wheel? Was it like learning scales? Did students yeah. have to throw yeah. 60 cylinders in a week or something? In a day. In a day, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I'd give them assignments, right? Uh-huh. Um, Ten perfect whatever, next week. Teaching was always kind of a chore, but it was my job, right? So. But then um, as we uh, move into the period uh, at the University of Regina, his early years, uh, we have these, uh, these 
I think, uh, some of his most fascinating works. We have this small pillow-shaped object with two, uh, I don't know what you would call them, kind of tubes coming out of it. Uh, and this, this, uh, this particular object really puzzled me when I, when I first encountered it. And uh, I thought it was, was a sculpture, and I thought it was something that you would set on top of a plinth. Um, but uh, I, I later discovered that I was uh, completely wrong, and that it was actually intended to hang on a wall with uh, leather straps, and it was a flower planter. Uh, so here you have some, uh, you know, Jack's ability to confuse and confound, uh, but uh, to pr produce objects that are, I think, are really uh, quite amazing for the way that they, they speak uh, almost two different languages at the same time. Uh, well, the thing about this is that no two pieces ever come out the same. There's always some kind of variation in it, and it's, you know, discovering something after you've done it, that is the exciting part of it. Uh, I never wanted to do, have the students do what I want them to do. I wanted them to find themselves and develop themselves. So anything they developed, they did themselves. And I helped, uh, I guess, coordinate the effort. That's what it, I guess uh, was my accomplishment. Uh, but uh, his training, interestingly, was, was not in ceramics, but rather in painting and printmaking. And this gives a good sense of, of his skills and his uh, as, and talent as a, as a draftsman. Uh, we see in this work here, Down the Garden Path, where we're introduced to his uh, menagerie of uh, fantastic and familiar creatures, uh, including his bandicoot down here in the lower left. Right. Well, they were a fantasy animal I created when I was in art school in the 50s, right? I started art school in 1953. And I continued to do them and I rediscovered them into clay after painting and printmaking. And uh, in the 70s, I had a, a graduate student from Australia that came. And the wife of this graduate student, student said, oh, those are bandicoots. And bandicoots are marsupial that lives in, the, in Australia. But they were really only fantasy animals that resembled bandicoots. So they became bandicoots because it was easier to, to give them a, a kind of title than to say, oh, they're a fantasy animal. Right? And then this is what has to be one of my favorite uh, works in the collection. Um, uh, by Jack, and it's a, a work which was acquired in 1989. I remember the meeting, the acquisitions meeting, where we acquired it, and uh, it's, it's a pot which uh, talks about the relationship of ceramics to, to an art gallery, and it has a story written on it. It says, what do you do with a pot that took three weeks of nursing when cracks in the bisque, uh, and here we see the crack, which he's uh, attempted to fill in, with glaze and at the end of it he says uh, what do you do with it well you uh, you offer it to a museum and hope that they will buy it to go with their collection of other cracked pots the thing so, i've so. tried to do and always continue to try to do is to discover and uh, rediscover often so that it isn't always the same, and not recreating what I have done before, right? Don't repeat your, your mistakes and don't repeat your successes, right? Find new mistakes and find new successes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to reinvent myself every time. Yeah. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com.